As part of the UK's leading first aid charity, the student-run St John Ambulance Links is there to help when you need it. With their members trained not only in first aid, but cycle response and other advanced courses, they can be the difference between a life lost and a life saved. The university divisions like links here at the University of Essex have a special function even um, within this big network of St. John Ambulance because the difference is that we are at the same time a sort of normal or official division of St. John Ambulance and um, a student society. So we're part of the students' union as well and we do our social gatherings, we go to the bar together, we have lots of fun with it, but we're also a division of St. John Ambulance that trains their members, um, goes on duty and tries to help as many people as possible. So the Lynx unit is actually in there doing their training at the moment. Now I believe this evening they're doing about fractures, so let's go and have a look. What happened? Right, right, right. Right, right. Right, right. Right, right. Right, right. Right, right. Right, until the bones straighten out. Within St. John Ambulance Links we offer a number of different training opportunities. The first one is that we offer a number of certificates which contribute to a nationally uh, recognised first aid certificate. In addition on Monday night sessions we offer the ability to refresh the knowledge that we have, to invite outside speakers to come and give us more knowledge on different specialised topics such as drugs and alcohol, uh, mental health issues, we've had people come in and do. So we get a, a much broader range of information and experience. So we use these two to support each other, to provide for our members uh, the best training and experience that we can before they have to go out on duty. I've actually been um, part of your training meetings for three years now. Yeah. Um, <coughs> and we've done amazing things. I've mummified somebody <laughs> in my bandage <laughs> sessions. Um, I've played with resussy babies and oh. that was quite fun um, and I've also we've done scenarios so tell us a bit about the scenarios that you've done. Scenarios are good fun because what we do is we we take uh, either a person or we take uh, uh, an Annie and we we use them so that we can practice a first aid scenario in a, in a decent in a decent representative setting so we might say do a major bleed by actually uh, using makeup to recreate a cut and a wound and an embedded piece of glass and using blood which is actually made out of crushed raisins in order to 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 provide a realistic blood and you can use them these to to evaluate people and it also provides a bit of training because seeing your first casualty is very it's scary it can be very traumatic so anything we can do to make that easier to make it so that people can see this and not freak out is good. It's the best time ever. How about the St. John Ambulance on campus? Do you know I about love, them? Yeah, I love them. Yeah? They strapped up my knee when I was drunk and I hurt my knee. Oh no, you hurt your knee? Yeah, I hurt my knee. Oh god. Well, I'm alright now. Are you safe? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. I love St. John's Ambulance. We love it. I love we St. John's Ambulance. Okay, I'm afraid the situation we have now, we cannot film. Um, we do have a female that is unconscious. I can't give any further details, but we will catch up with the crews who are dealing with her at the moment to see how they deal later. But obviously with you know, 1,200 people to look after, having St John's to palm them off to and let, let us crack on with the venues a lot better. Um, yeah, no, we have a really good relationship with them. Very good. Very hard working, lovely people, nice uniform. Always there when we need them. Great, fantastic. Could never, couldn't work without them. Make our job a lot easier. And I love every single one of them. They're wonderful. 
So earlier we weren't allowed to film. Um, so could you just tell us, Justin, what was ha what was happening earlier in your duty? Um, so we were called to a uh, unconscious female uh, on stairs, uh, highly intoxicated. Um, we finally got her around and uh, got her into a carriage here, ready to move her up to night nine. Um, and uh, unfortunately, she was um, vomiting quite a lot, so we had to get her out of the chair and onto the floor to um, sort of do our basic airways and things like that to make sure that we weren't going to sort of end it in a bad situation. Um, by then the paramedic had arrived as well um, so she was taken over at the same time. Um, we had to sort of continue monitoring, monitoring her for a good half an hour I think it was um, but she picked, perked back up and came back around and was absolutely fine afterwards and we took her back up in the carriage here and did take her to the night line as a, the paramedic didn't want to take her to hospital because she wasn't a priority for hospital. She was just very drunk. So quite a drastic situation that you had to call an, uh, a paramedic yeah. or call an ambulance as such. Do you find that you you have to do that a lot as, as a general it, it very It does vary. Um, it, it does vary what duties you do actually. Um, if you do the nighttime duties that involve going to clubs, you get a lot of people that are, have drunk a lot. Um, and in worst cases that you have to call a paramedic for either backup or support and they're a professional medical opinion um, and normally if they go to hospital they're sort of out of our care and they could be watched on throughout the whole night which is always sort of a bit of more weight off our shoulders and the paramedics are always very nice to us as well so they look after us. Excellent. Well thank you for filling us in in what happened and um, obviously we we did have to stop filming but um, it's, it's nice to know that it was dealt with happily well yep. and um, and yeah, you're you're happy with the outcome. I was, yes, it was a very good outcome, which is always uh, beneficial at the end of the day. Excellent. Thank you very much, Justin, Thank for you. catching up with us oh. at the NDL duty. Thank you. Thank you. If you look at it straight up. On the first duty that you ever go to, you're thinking, oh my God, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? But then when someone comes in, the fact that you know what to do to help them, it, it just makes it all worthwhile. Excellent. What are you actually studying at the university? I'm studying history. History? Yes. And do you find that helps with your St John at all? Um, well, I've done a lot of battle studies, you know, civil, the American Civil War, <laughs> dealing with chaos and stuff, so know what to do for that. But um, So you'd be good at triage then? Yeah, triage and, um, you know, it'll be, you know, great help for when I, when I work into a hospital as well, so I'm glad I joined. We're definitely proud to be St John's. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been Kat's first duty with St John Ambulance. She has been here as an observer, but um, we thought we'd find out how she's been doing. So have you enjoyed your first duty? I have indeed. It was a bit daunting to begin with, but after a while it was quite nice to be here. Yeah. And did you did you see any treatment that you thought, oh wow, that's what I'm going to be doing? Yeah, there's this girl who needed her eye cleaned because she had some sort of chemical in her eye. And also a bouncer with a cut on his hand. I hear you gave him quite a novelty plaster for that. Yes, cut. a Shrek one. A Shrek plaster. So first duty overall. Pretty good. Really enjoyed it, yeah. And the people in St John, because obviously St John on campus is a society as well. Yeah. So, as a society, how do you think it fares? Um, I quite like it. I haven't attended that many Mondays because I'm a bit lazy. But whenever I do, I really enjoy it. Students. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you for talking to me, thank Kat. You. I'm glad you enjoyed your first duty, and yeah. I hope you go on to do a hell of a lot more. Oh, All right. Thank, thank you. you. So certainly a good duty there for Kat, but we wanted to know more. So we've joined up with some of the Lynx members after one of their meetings to find out those stories that are just made to be laughed at. Tell me about Poo Boy. No, tell me, um, and the lovely viewers about Poo Boy. Rich, why do you roleplay Poo No! As I understand, is that the summer board? It might be. Okay. You're not going to get me any going for And I believe um, that it was the gentleman who was slightly drunk. He had passed out in a and in his attempt to get up, he had reached through 
the bottom and then into the set tool at the bottom. So his hands covered in because he was obviously grabbing for someone to hold on to. He managed to find someone to hold on to. Oh, no. <laughs> particularly secure, shall we say. And he got up eventually, looked at his hand and realised I've got shit in my hand and then proceeded to try and wipe it off. And the uh, the, the security staff had been called and he was told that there was someone passed out and he was called out and then banging on the door trying to get him out. And as soon as the door opened and this guy emerged, right, covered in shit, head to toe, in shit, they literally backed off by about four foot. So instead of security chasing him out, it was the fact of being chased by a man covered in poo. And that was the problem, it's because he was also on ecstasy. Right? So the fact that these people were running away from him, he just wanted to give them a hug. Um, <laughs> so they ended up running round, um, <laughs> the security <laughs> staff running away from a guy covered in shit. Excellent, now that's a duty that I would have liked to have filmed, wouldn't you? This was the year when um, the summer ball was about three foot deep in the mud as well, and everything was sinking. It was in the tents. But we've had quite a few experiences. Yes. I, I myself have had a few experiences. Oh yes, you're... Yeah. yeah. You might want to explain that to the viewers. I went to V-Festival. It was my very first V-Festival duty. I was only a newbie and we're on patrol and a group of lads comes up and they're going, two time boom, two time boom. And we're thinking, what on earth is going on there? We don't know anything about it. And they grab us and say, oh, you're medical, come with us. So again, the nurse that I was with gets her gloves on and they proceed to take out their, their manly parts, their friends' manly parts, and show them to us shouting two time bone because it was oddly coloured. Now the nurse I was on with jumped in quite happy, you know, like oh my goodness, she thought her way of saying it was if you treat it with confidence, they'll never come and do it again. I'm there going, don't show me this. So we've seen the Essex Lynx members at work and at play, but do you think you're up to the challenge? With 58 units across universities throughout the UK, it's your chance to be part of the difference. Thank you for watching.